So have you ever tried to suppress the way you feel? Maybe you tried to hide your fear or maybe anxiety or confusion or jealousy or the fact that you were hurt by something that somebody said. If you have experienced that, chances are that you are trying your best not to be vulnerable. So what is vulnerability? What is it not? Should you be vulnerable? How does being vulnerable benefit you? How do you start being vulnerable? How is it different from weakness? These are some of the questions that I'm going to be answering in this video. Hi, I'm Divya Tampi. I am a mid-career and an emotional wellness coach. I'm on a mission to help mid-career professionals activate their core by discovering their dream career and making a switch. If you like this video, make sure that you click on the like button. And yes, do consider subscribing to this channel so that every time I come with a new video, you get notified about it. And if you think that anybody could benefit from this video, make sure that you share this video with them. So let me start with a story. This was about two decades ago when I was working in a hotel. Uh, I was the supervisor of the food and beverage service department and we were running short of staff. It was a Saturday evening at about 7.10 and I had one of my team members run along to me and tell me that he had been waiting to pick up the buffet food from the kitchen and lay it out in the seafood restaurant because the restaurant was supposed to open up at 7. But the kitchen department had not yet provided him with the food. Feeling annoyed and irritated, I rushed along with him back to the kitchen. And I saw the executive chef who was working alongside his people. I went up to him. So this was a person who was much more senior to me and he was well respected in the hotel. So I went up to him and I complained and I said, Chef, you know, we've been waiting for the food to come, but it hasn't yet come. The restaurant is supposed to open up at 7 o'clock and it's already 7.15. He turned around, he looked at me angrily, raised his voice slightly and told me, Divya, the food is not ready. We are doing our best to get it ready and you can probably see that. So wait till it is because when the food is ready, we will tell you. And he just turned around and continued with his work. Completely mortified and feeling very upset, I left the place. And we had no option but to wait for another 10 minutes for the food to get ready. I thought to myself about all the ways in which I should deal with this and I made up my mind that the next day I was going to complain to the general manager about it. The next day arrived, but before I could do anything about it, the chef came to me and he invited me to his cabin. I went along, not so happy and feeling resentful in that mo moment. He sat me down and he said, Divya, first of all, I want to acknowledge that the way I spoke to you yesterday was not right. Yes, we were under pressure and we had a lot of work that we had to get done. But you were also under pressure and it wasn't right for me to raise my voice and speak to you that way. You were just trying to do your job. So I really want to apologize to you. I'm sorry for what happened and I'll make sure that it doesn't happen again in future. My jaws dropped. I really hadn't expected that from him. He was a man who was well respected you know, and he was really good at what he did. He was much, much more senior to me and he could have easily gotten away with what he did. From my point of view, he didn't stand to lose much by not apologizing to me, but he did. What he demonstrated that day was vulnerability and it elevated him in my eyes. So what is vulnerability? Vulnerability can be defined as emotional exposure. It involves going beyond your comfort zone, expressing yourself and opening yourself up to the risk of being judged or rejected. Vulnerability involves letting go of power or letting go of control to some extent. So it can mean asking for help from somebody or admitting that you're not feeling too well or letting someone know that you're feeling anxious or scared or worried about something which is going to happen or asking for somebody's moral support. These can all be examples of being vulnerable. The thing is, vulnerability has the power to change the way you live, the way you love, the way you work and the way you show up in your relationships. So how does it benefit you to be vulnerable? 
you see when you are being vulnerable you're being honest and authentic because you are letting your true feelings show and when you do that uh, knowingly or unknowingly you encourage the other person also to be authentic and honest so when you are being vulnerable you encourage other people also to be vulnerable and when the two of you are being honest and authentic with each other automatically trust is generated and this allows for a deeper level of connection in this particular example that i gave you where the executive chef apologized he chose to be vulnerable but in his choosing to be vulnerable he also allowed me to be vulnerable because in response to his apology i apologized to him as well because i suddenly became aware of how rude i was in the way i approached him the previous evening and i became willing to acknowledge that only because he led the way by demonstrating that it was safe to be vulnerable see the thing about being vulnerable is that before you are vulnerable with others you have to learn to be vulnerable with yourself and that starts by acknowledging your feelings a lot of us have a lot of difficulty in acknowledging our own feelings for example if i am feeling sad i may have difficulty in acknowledging that i am feeling sad or hurt or confused you know and i will try to suppress these feelings when i try to suppress these feelings and try to be in control all the time and try to put up this face that uh, i know what i'm talking about that i am not concerned about things or that i'm not hurt by what happens then the other people feel disconnected from me because i'm not letting the human side of me show as a result of which i can very quickly start feeling alienated and lonely so even in the presence of a large number of people around me i can feel lonely and alienated because i choose not to be vulnerable on the other side when i do choose to be vulnerable it allows me to then feel safe and and feel okay even in the presence of uncertainty i can then focus my energies on my goals on the things that i really want to do rather than maintaining this pretense of being in control because if you think about it maintaining this facade of being in control or not being affected takes up a lot of energy that prevents you from being able to focus on the things that you truly want to do so how is being vulnerable different to being weak in fact being vulnerable requires a lot of strength it takes a lot of courage to talk about something that makes you feel vulnerable and being vulnerable does not mean letting it all out and broadcasting everything that's going on with you it is about being honest and vulnerability is a sign of your self awareness and emotional intelligence when you acknowledge and articulate your deepest feelings you're being honoring of yourself and being respecting of others and you see what can be expressed can be managed emotions that we do not articulate or express are the ones that become difficult to manage and if you have been in the habit of maintaining a facade or pretending to be in control all the time over a period of time one can also develop a sense of shame so when we hide things you know we can develop a sense of shame because somewhere we start believing that something is innately wrong with me and that i am not worthy of connection on the other hand when we choose vulnerability we choose personal growth personal growth over pretense and we are choosing connection with others over isolation so why is it so hard for us to be vulnerable you see most of us have been exposed to this idea that we should be strong at all times we constantly being exposed to movies ads books thoughts quotes that you have to be strong you know and as children we have experienced hurt and pain as a result of rejection and judgment from others including our own family members mainly from our own family members probably and along the way we have learned that being vulnerable is a sign of weakness and that if we were to be vulnerable then others would take advantage of us and this prevents us from acknowledging our own feelings we refuse to totally acknowledge our sadness or to cry we refuse to let another person know the difficulties that we are going through we refuse to even acknowledge the love that we feel for another person or the appreciation or the gratitude that we may feel towards our our own loved ones for all that they do for us and over a time people can really learn to numb themselves and this is actually a learned behavior 
So how do you start the practice of being vulnerable? Especially if you are not used to being vulnerable at all and you always believed in the idea of being strong and staying strong. Well, start by remembering that your feelings, good or bad, pleasant or unpleasant, is what makes you human. And when you acknowledge those feelings, you start feeling connected with yourself. And that's a very important part because till the time that you cannot be connected to yourself, it is very hard to be honest and be connected to others. Not only that, when you are being vulnerable, you also give permission to other people in your life to be vulnerable and honest and authentic. One more thing, we are not designed to be independent and strong. We are designed to be interdependent and strong. So you may want to start small. Start by being a little more open with the people that you're already close to. Start by expressing your gratitude. Thank them for the things that they do. Let them know how much their love means to you, how much their care means to you. Apologize when you make mistakes. At work, start small by asking people for help with small things. Asking people for their opinion and suggestions on things that you do. And letting them know that their suggestions and opinions and thoughts matter. And later, if their suggestions have helped, let them know how helpful it has been. Slowly and steadily, you will get more and more comfortable with your own emotions as well as expressing them. And before we finish, let me say that there is a difference between vulnerable and being needy. The two are not the same. And if I'm expressing my emotions and feelings to others with the intention of manipulating them or getting favors from them or winning their sympathy, then that is not vulnerability. That is manipulation. So there's a clear difference between the two. So in conclusion, emotional connection is equally important in your professional life as it is in your personal life. Emotional connection happens through respect, care and trust and vulnerability opens the door to all three. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Divya Tampi signing off and I'll see you again in the next video.